Welcome to Cinemagma. In today's video, we will showcase the London, UK premiere of the 2023 American epic Western crime drama film, Killers of the Flower Moon at the BFI Film Festival. The film is directed and produced by Martin Scorsese, who co-wrote the screenplay with Eric Roth, based on the 2017 book of the same name by David Gran. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel to be notified when new videos are released. I had been in uh, Oklahoma uh, about five years before David Graham wrote his book, and that's when I first heard about the Osage. And they were kind of unbelievable stories. Uh, a lot of them were urban legends about how they, you know, spent their money and threw it away and wasted it. And when I started this film, I was bound and determined to find out what was true and what wasn't. And I found that they were no crazier than any of us would have been if we'd gotten a few extra bucks. As a matter of fact, probably more reserve. And they didn't ever refer to themselves as wealthy. They didn't uh, flaunt what they had, but they got the conveniences. You know, they suddenly had a housekeeper. They had the clothes that they liked and, and clothes and jewelry and, you know, and cars. I mean, they. They thought of cars the way they used to think of horses, you know, they, they loved them. And uh, they loved them in bright colors. So I noticed in Fairfax where we shot at the time, looking at some period maps, there was always a car painting company in the town. And so if somebody wanted a car a certain color, they could get it. But uh, 
Yeah, they, 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 they really had a sophisticated artistic sense, which shows up in the uh, unique Osage art of the period. I think this story is relevant because we're learning that we treat a lot of people unfairly, that we don't live well together, we don't, uh, as man's inhumanity to man, it just drives me crazy, that we can't accept everybody and be, realize we're in it together. They're, we're not different. Inside, we, we still have the same heart and caring, and, and we just need to be more aware of, of, of the other person. I've been working him, with him for many, many years, and it's very exciting every time. Obviously, Killers of the Flower Moon was going to be very challenging and very exciting and a very important story to tell. So I was excited and nervous and called Renee as soon as I know we would be moving forward with the project for her expertise and knowledge of the indigenous community. It's, it's, it's really the only way I know how to do it. We first start with the incredible research that Marty and Marianne did with the Osage people and that outreach that they had already established. And we just built on that. And we first went to the Osage community and we saw everyone who was interested in actually being part of the film. Yes, we had a fantastic open call in Oklahoma City, Pahuska, and Tulsa. 2,500 indigenous people came, wonderful community, everybody very happy to be there. We cast a lot of the movie from those weeks in November 2019. No, I, we didn't consider bringing in Leo and Robert. Leo and Robert were there. <laughs> When did we, and Jesse Blevins, they were there. So it was the other people who we had to consider about bringing into this world. So we have some actors that Marty's worked with in the past, new people like John Lithgow and Brendan Fraser, who he has never worked with. Other people like Tommy Schultz, who plays Blackie, who's never acted before. So it's many, many different people from different walks of life. Well, I'm disappointed that we don't have the actors. Um, it's a good time for them to be here and to um, enjoy, even even if it's just a moment of uh, of uh, getting a picture taken together and you know everything they went through. The film took a number of years to make. Um, the pandemic took its toll. There's no doubt. Um, it took its toll in time and set and and interruptions and but we finally got it done. Um, and um, it's been a very special film for me especially over the years, trying to get it, uh, uh, get it to um, uh, be in a shape that is a story I wanted to tell. You know, along with Leo and Lily Gladstone and De Niro and Jesse Plemons and all the Osage with us on this picture. But um, it's a special film for me, uh, and I, I hope I learned something from it, you know. Thank you, Marty. Thank you. Yeah, I met him by accident because of a lot of weird things that happened, but someone had miscut the negative of his uh, student film, and I was the only person who knew how to cut negative there, so I was able to help him. It was purely accidental. And the woman who did the, the bad cutting called me recently and said, I'm the person who did that, and I'm sorry. And I said, you gave me the greatest job in the world. Don't be sorry. And we've become friends. So it was just an accident, you know, but the minute I met him, a relationship formed. I think he trusted me to do what was right for the film and there wouldn't be ego battles and things like that. So um, it's been a joyous trip for a very long time. No, I had no idea about it. And uh, it was, I mean, I, I hope that we know a lot about slavery the terrible things in slavery, but, but we don't know enough. We still need to know more, but we knew nothing really about the Native Americans. And this will open, I mean, the Osage said when they saw the film, this opens the door for us, for people to see us differently, yeah.
child. We want people to realize that um, everyone is guilty in this movie to a certain extent, you know? It's widespread and that's what happened when you think that there were seven, I think something like 900 lynchings in the state of North Carolina alone in one year. I mean, that's just horrifying. So we have to deal with this. We have to learn about it and uh, open up to the Native Americans. They have much to give us. They have a beautiful culture. Uh, you know, they were, uh, they, they were wonderful, um, all of them. You know, uh, Leo obviously is a pro, Bob, you know, what, what more can you say about those two guys? You know, I think the revelation was, uh, was Lily, you know, um, you know, Marty and uh, Leo found her and, and she's, you know, the soul of the film. And, and I thought that, you know, so I'm so proud that she's in it and honored that she's in it. And also, you know, I think all, all the actors, uh, it was something that was near and dear to their heart. You know, the Native American world was something that was really sort of important to them. You know, we, we reached out, you know, we, when we, we bought the book, my partner and I, Dan Freakin, bought the book, and, uh, and they, they were like the first people we reached out. We reached out to Chief Standing Bear and just said that we wanted, um, you know, his, for the, the nation, the Osage Nation, to be involved. You know, I think it's an in, in, in acknowledgement of, 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 of these horrible things that, you know, transpired so we can uh, heal. Well, I'm Principal Chief of the Osage Nation, and when David Gran uh, was writing the book, uh, he was um, uh, spending a lot of time with us, years, and uh, after he sold the movie rights, he called and told us that Imperative would, would uh, take it from here, and we met with Imperative, and we, we were very concerned that someone else is going to tell our story without being our story, but Imperative was very careful. They didn't want to overpromise, but when they started saying this is a movie that the Osage will be proud of, and they're going to tell the story through the eyes of Molly, that really got us uh, in a positive mood. And then Chad Renfro, who I had appointed as our ambassador to this world and the movie, uh, said, Chief Marty Scorsese, he'll be here in the morning. And so he came. First thing he said is, we're going to film here. And then my staff and I uh, encouraged him and Marianne Bauer and everyone to work with our people on, on this whole uh, process. And uh, it's just been something we worked to, with for years, every, every day. And for six months, the filming was right there in, in, in Pahaska. Uh, dirt streets, everything. What you see is not computer generated. I, I've been down watching them film. It's an amazing process. I've never seen anything like it. We've had other mo movies made in Pasca, but nothing like this. Well, he's a great guy. I mean, he's very easy to talk to, and he's uh, even easier to listen to because he is a, the, the best storyteller that I've ever run into. It's, it's, he's a wonderful person. From the very beginning, uh, from uh, uh, just carried on from what David Grand was doing, uh, through Imperative, through through um, meeting with Marty, through the years uh, of working with everybody, they listened. But I never thought it would be so much what we had dreamed about and hoped for. We, we, we never would have gone that far, but here it is. I got to thank Apple too for providing the the framework to make it all happen. We watched that get built, although they're behind the scenes. I want people to realize that this is a true story, and I also want to, people to realize that the forces that made this happen could result in in the bad acts that you see in the movie, but it could happen to anyone if you're not ready to admit. Uh, how the world works. We were not prepared, uh, and that shows. But now, uh, even though we've lost all that wealth, uh, we uh, are still here as a people, and we're still uh, expressing ourselves, well, as this movie shows.
depending on what you're doing, there's six different ways for a, a, an Osage woman to wear a shawl and a blanket. And um, so she, I basically um, worked with Lily a lot. And so depending on what her actions were for the day, we would sit down and kind of discuss what she rehearsed and then make a decision on how she was going to be wearing that shawl or that blanket. Well, if you look at Chief Bonnie Castle, he's wearing a blanket, it's called Piotti style, but it's long, and you can tell that he's a leader when he's wearing that, and he's really carrying it off. And when you look at the holy man who does the uh, blessing, um, he has uh, a blanket around his waist, and it's rolled down, and so that's another, that's really his position, and typically they wear them that way. You know, I didn't think I would ever be in the movie industry. This is my first project. So I was lucky enough to work with Jacqueline. And um, so it was an experience of a lifetime for sure. And I'm so grateful and thankful that Marty chose to, to tell our story in such a beautiful way. Uh, the whole, the whole, every day was a unique experience. Uh, I, I'd say one of my favorite scenes is the leaving of the delegation for New York because we involve so many Osage people in that scene and they got to be in the film wearing the same clothing. We, rec we replicated a big panoramic shot of that occasion from, you know, photos we had from research and so many Osage uh, people were invited to be part of that scene. And it, that, that's a scene that made me, brought tears to my eyes when I saw them all lined up and that they could be a part of telling this story that's so heartfelt within the nation. I think it was quite cathartic for a lot of people because like Julie said, not, not only is this story not taught in school because the white America is embarrassed of what they allowed to happen and were, and were complicit in, but it's, it's such an important, important story that Marty's very, his movies tend to be very cathartic and he really got to the heart of the, betra the love and the betrayal that was inherent in this story. Uh, I'm one of the sound artists. I, I am the er, first part of the sound design. I capture all of the original performances as they're occurring on the day in each and every shot. It's a, it's a collaboration of my tools, the way a camera uses its tools to convey character, to, to invite the audience to believe in, in, in these characters, the journey they're on and the environment they're in. In this film, it's very specific in terms of its dependence on sound for emotional content. Um, Leo and, and Lily and Bob De Niro have all chosen signature voices that are intrinsic to the characters who they become, not their own voices, and it's very specialized. Leo's, I don't know if you know the film or not, but um, particularly Bob De Niro's use of the Osage language, which is this amazing, dignified kind of metaphor for the Osage as a culture and as a nation. De Niro's use of Osage in a fluent way is a tool of deceit for his liaison to the white community for the Osage, but in fact his leadership of the conspiracy to their destruction. It's an amazing, amazing set of contrasts, and, and uh, I, I hope you enjoy the film because it's, there's nothing like it out there. I, I, I've, done, I've done 150 movies. I have, I have been re rewarded in many ways. This one is extremely special, authentic, and heartfelt by all the parties concerned. Marty, Marty put something together here that's fantastic. He's senior year in years, but his vitality is timeless. And it was a privilege to be part of this just for that. We love to play with good players. We're like musicians. We're session players in our particular passion for our discipline, our instrument, if you will. But we have a conductor who's the best. We have a score, which is in this script, which is phenomenal. And then we have players both in front of and behind the camera. And for us, this is life at its max. This is living in your maximum potential. No, nothing better than that. 
the universality of it, how we can uh, delude ourselves into rationalizing uh, a horrific behavior in the name of some other, other goal. Um, this was a conspiracy not of one or two people, but of an entire community around another community. They had a sense of entitlement that drove them to genocide. And it's a metaphor for how humans behave, you know. It's, a, it's, a holo it's an interesting thing. I learned something yesterday that's amazing. The Osage who, have survived, who had survived these events never spoke of it later. They didn't speak of it to each other, to their children, to their community. And it's exactly the same thing that happens with Holocaust survivors. They never spoke of it. They didn't. This, and this is a kind of uh, same event in a, in, a different, in a different box. So that, that is something I think people should at least have an appreciation for, that what we have to be guarded most against is our own capacity to rationalize to the negative. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and comment on the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are released.